Hi guys, this is Allison Pryor, and I teach acrylic paintings for the beginner. I do techniques that are very simple and easy to follow in real time, so you can follow along with me. Hi! I even teach you how to draw a cat. So let's get on and start the new painting. So here's the cute kitty cat. Isn't that cute? It's different, isn't it? Ooh, she's so sweet. Playing with a flower. So I'll show you how to paint that today. Yep, she's so cute. Maybe a little scary looking, I don't know. But she's cute. Now. Now all you need for this painting is, we always go with more, the kitten I think is going to be black and white, but you're going to need some shadow colors. And if you want to do a background, different colors, maybe add some little flowers, a butterfly. We don't know what we're going to do with this yet. We'll see what the kitten looks like first, but the kitten can play with something. It can be anything. So it could be a ball, a string with a ball on the end. It could be, like I said, a butterfly. It could be a flower. It could be anything that that kitten is playing with. We'll see it as it comes along. And this is the color. So I, uh, I always say put your um, primary colors. And once you put your primary colors on your palette, then you're pretty safe to say you have all the colors you'll ever need. So that's red, yellow, and blue, and uh, white and black, just to lighten and darken your colors and or your values. And you can also use sap green and burnt umber if you like. Blue, ultramarine blue seems to be the most popular. Sap green, um, cad red, and cad yellow seem to be pretty popular. But you can use whatever colors you have on hand. Okay, don't have to be these colors. Everybody uses different colors. Whatever you, whatever you're used to, and whatever you have available. Now, depending on the size of your canvas, this, the one I have here is only uh, 9 by 12, I believe, and um, it doesn't say, but uh, it's uh, not 11 by 14. It's smaller than 11 by 14, and um, so the smaller your canvas, the smaller your brush. So I'm only going to use a small uh, filbert brush, or you can use a flat brush, okay? And we're going to need um, probably a a liner brush for some whiskers or you know we're gonna need a liner brush uh, so let's just use that many brushes for now and um, if you need any different brushes as we go along I, I would say more than likely you're gonna need a bristle brush a nice bristle brush depending on the size of your canvas this is only a small size 4 but you can uh, you get the bigger ones like I said you can use um, some of you out there already have my brushes, my Allison Pryor brush. These are great for grass. So some of you guys looking at this video already have these, and if anybody would like one, just email me and I will tell you how you can get your hands on one of those. So, I also have uh, different sizes. I have a two inch. Two inch is good for a larger canvas. And that's it. I'm just going to show you what I have here. So let's go and uh, start with the kitten. So we're going to make the kitten black and white. So as you can see, I got my background done in green. So that's fine. We did that. And now, how to get that kitty started. So you draw it out first on a piece of paper. You can transfer it. You can um, transfer the original copy and transfer it to a drawing on your paper so um, I can give you the original copy so that you can trace it out if you like and then put it on your tape and on your canvas with some some uh, tape and um, that's painters tape and then you take some carbon paper like I've showed you before my, some of my other videos how to use carbon paper the black side down and you put the black side down on your canvas and then you get a, as long as it's taped down here it doesn't matter we don't mind the carbon paper moving but we don't want the paper to move okay because of the lines and then you just trace out your lines press hard on your and that will the carbon paper then will trace it right on your canvas 
and it's okay to have the lines there because we'll be painting over those. So it's better to have uh, carbon paper because that way it won't smear when you're painting over it. It'll just be dry and, and you can paint right over it. Okay, so. So then you take your, take your paper off, the drawing, and you get that out of the way. And then you have your drawing on your canvas. See? So now your drawing is on your canvas and you don't have to worry about because if you try to draw on your canvas freehand and you make all these you make you have to do a lot of corrections and stuff you're either going to damage your canvas or you're just not going to be happy with your drawing and then you got to start all over and probably get a new canvas so, so this is much easier when you're painting when you're drawing is a different story you want to learn to draw the cat then you know you would do step by step You'd measure it up, all kinds of things. I could probably show you how to draw a cat. So all you have to do now is have your paints ready. Like I say, always have your uh, primary colors. It's always good to have your primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and uh, black and white. And if you want the extra brown and green, because you can get brown and green from all your primary colors. So now I'm just going to put some black I'm going to use my black and my blue. I'm going to probably put a little bit of blue in there. I'm going to take a bristle brush. You can take a sable brush if you want a flat sable. Or, you know, I'll show you both, okay? Here's this, this I always call them sable, but um, I think the nylon ones are nicer. As long as they bounce back, make sure when you're checking out your brushes, it bounces back. When you pull back, it bounces back. If it don't, the watercolor brushes, okay? There's another one, I like this one too, this is really nice. And uh, I'm trying out different brushes, trying to see, you know, what's best. Well, you know, if you can afford it, then try to buy the cheaper ones. And if you pay $50 for a brush, then, you know, you're gonna be, uh, you won't even wanna use it. Yeah, you'll be afraid to use it. Okay, so I'm gonna wet my brush. And I'm going to try this one first, so and then I'll try to bristle, okay? So now, all we need to do is we want to keep the eyes free and that ear. So we don't want to lose where the lines are so we can figure out where we're going. So I'm just going to paint all this black first, okay? Because our kitty is all black, except for the paws. Now, originally, uh, that photo that I'm following, that I got a free photo on uh, Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y, all kinds of free beautiful pictures on there and um, I changed it up a lot because there's a lot of white in this kitten but I took it out because I kind of wanted to do a black I want to do something different and so I leave that there hopefully it don't fall down and now all you have to do is take your black paint and some blue but equal amounts, okay? Just so that it won't be so black. And it won't, and you know, you don't want a flat black, right? So here we go with our nylon chiseled edge, all right? Chiseled edge brush, see how nice and chiseled edge that is? Now, because that will bring us around the lines really easy. Paint all of that to black. Now, like I said, leave that little ear out. If you want to put white paint on that, so you know where it is, same with the eyes, maybe we could do that too. Let's just do this first. Let's get all the black in first. All right. So this is so easy. I'm gonna make this easy as I can for you as I always try to. Sometimes it's not easy to be easy. But I try my best. Cause I know that some of you guys out there got uh, your kids drawing along or painting along with us too and if it's easy enough that the whole family can enjoy even better all right so let's just get all the black paint in there so you can see the kind of a bluish tint to it so if you want more black just put black in there all right don't lose the ear. That's the ear, okay. 
If you lose the ear, you might have a problem putting it, finding the right place for it. All right, so I'm gonna put more in here. Nice and shiny, isn't it? It's shiny because the light's shining on it and it's wet. And that's what happens. So let's get all that black on here. Keep the eye and the nose. Keep the eye, just go right around it. We can work on that after. Want to keep those eyes. See how the chiseled edge goes right around the corner? You know? And, oh, looks like Batman now. So you go right around with the chiseled edge, go around that corner there, and it gives you a nice round, gets the edge really nice and round. And now we're gonna get around here, and around the bottom here, there's this, the nose, the, there we go, it goes around here, and here. So you got that much done, see? Cute. Yes. Good. Now let's try the body and the tail. So I'm going to go back into my bluish and blackish bluish. And I'm going to use a bristle brush this time. Let's see how that works. Oh yeah, it's nice. And on the edge here, it's a little harder to get the edge with a nice sharp uh, line because the bristles are all over the place in some cases. And um, so you might say, well, why am I using a bristle and a nylon brush or synthetic brush? What's best to use? Well, I find that the bristle brush helps paint spread faster, um, gives it a bit of a textured look, and uh, the, um, the nylon brush, synthetic, is a smooth look. The smooth looks nice for the skies. And, Anything that you want a nice background that's smooth. Anything that you want rough texture, you use the bristle brush. Okay? So, you know, a lot of it is your own preference. But if you have an idea what the brushes do, then you can decide what brush you want to use. It's knowing, knowing what the brushes do. That's the big thing. You have to know what they do and what they're capable of doing. Like I said, my other video, I got my my brushes here that I use. I, I find these amazing. I've been using them for many, many years. And these are the bristle brushes. I think it's a natural here. And um, it just gives you fantastic grass and texture. We'll be using this today for our grass. And I got that one and I got the... Uh, the two inch for bigger areas, but just look at the bristles, how nice, you know, they, they just stick stick right out. It's, it's like they're just ready to go for grass and bushes and everything. And uh, so I've been signing my name on some of my brushes and palette knives and whatever else I can find around. And I'm telling people if they want one of those, just let me know. I, I have to charge uh, for the brushes, so I have to buy them and I have to ship them. So $9.99 should cover everything each one but anyway that's up to you and um, other people who got them love them so I, I wouldn't want to send you a brush that's uh, I wouldn't put my name on it if I didn't if I didn't like I've been using for years and years so I've been using for years and years and only lately been uh, telling people about them and uh, in you know in the video where I tell you about those brushes I also show you a sample of how I use them and what they can do and like I said in my video you can try try to get those in a you know a hardware store or 
in any of the stores around you might be able to find them if you can't find them then you can I'll get it to you just let me know if you can't find them just go in and look for a um, bristle brush one inch and see if you can find one like that with a wooden handle they have to be like that they have to be the they can't be um, nylon because uh, in this type because they won't hold the paint but these beautiful bristles uh, hold the paint beautifully the bristles themselves on top they're just made for making trees and bushes and flowers and they have to have that kind of top to them and uh, you know and then that will give you some beautiful brush uh, bushes and stuff and flowers and I'll show you how how it all works so that's that and there we go there we go see how I'm going outside the lines because that doesn't have a chiseled edge but I kind of like the way it's going on I like the way it's it's moving a little faster with my brush but I don't mind going outside the lines because we are going to be uh, pulling out the fur from the lines anyway look how cute that is see that's why I don't mind going outside the lines see how we're going to go outside the lines anyway later on now here's a smaller brush that we're going to use on the paws it's smaller, it's chiseled edge, and it's probably nylon synthetic. Anything like that, uh, as long as, like I say, always check your bristles. Make sure they bounce back. See? Wink. Alright, so we'll get some white paint. Now when you get your white paint, I want you to, because there are, you, anything that's white has to have shadow underneath to bring the white out. Okay, so I'm getting some white and a little tiny bit of blue. Alright. At this point, it doesn't matter how white, or I'm sorry, blue, the darker blue is, as long as we get a number of painting, all right? You can add a little tiny bit of black to gray it up a little bit. There we go. So this will be for the paws. We'll put, we'll put the white over it after. So your paws also have little, those little lines here, so don't go over those. Okay, so I'm finding that a bit bright, so I'm going to add more black or blue to it to darken it off. Alright, because I want a shadow to be underneath the paw. We might even cover up most of the shadow, but you know, we got to have a shadow there in order for that white to come out. So you can go back. In. So the little lines that you see, pass over those. Alright. You need a chiseled edge if you want to Keep that nice and smooth on the edges there and go over those dark lines you already put in. Alright. So. See? And you go up against the edge with your chiseled edge, alright? Chiseled edge brushes, bristle brushes. This is what you need. Some people, a lot of people are really confused about the brushes. I was too when I first started. I had no idea what to use, had no idea what size to use, what type, what the difference was with brushes. You got any questions about brushes? Leave it in the comment section or you can email me at alisonpryoryahoo.com. Any questions you have, I'll answer for you because I've been doing this for years. It doesn't mean that I know everything and if I don't know everything, I'll find out for you. So. I'll do my research. You can do research too, but some people don't know what to research or they don't have time. So I don't mind doing that for you because you've been looking at my videos and subscribed. And so one good turn deserves another. Hey, why not? Because you guys are so good to me. So I wouldn't be doing it this without you guys. I wouldn't even bother. It was so much fun, you know, getting comments and people sending me their sending me their paintings to see them and get my opinion on them or just to show them to me and ask me questions and comments are fantastic. It just makes it so much fun. Oh, okay. 
okay no big deal that dries we'll go out with some white we're going to be bringing some of the black into I'm just mixing up some of my dark color so if you want to wait for the black to dry before you do this you certainly can do that too but don't panic if you end up getting some black into your white and that dries then you can just go back over it again see see how I'm getting black into white don't see me panic <laughs> that's cute already now let's um, put a little bit of a, the grayish color I'm just I just switched now to a, a liner brush because I'm going to start doing some small areas so I'm just going to put that little bit in here just oh there you go I don't want you to miss out on that there we go so good so I don't have anybody doing my camera work so I have to do it all by myself I'm here in my room by myself talking to my camera and you guys and knowing that I just feel like I'm with you anyway even though I'm here in a room by myself I'm talking to my camera and I still feel that you're listening I, I don't know it's just a wonderful feeling I guess it's because I know when when you see this you're going to be making comments and just I can't describe it so I got the line right here for the ear so we'll put that line in just so we know where the ear goes and we come down a little bit just to give it a little bit of an ear shape good and now we'll do the uh, let's add a little bit of white uh, red to our just a little bit of red to our white Get that pink nose there you are pinky nose so put a little bit um, I'm using my liner brush there's the pinky nose good it's almost like a triangle shape okay good and now for the eyes let's let's figure out where the eyes are so the eyes are I'm just gonna use a bit of white for those for now just so we can see where they are because of the black so the eyes will start about here that's the bottom of the eye okay that's the eyelid and the other eye just a semicircle and up okay that's the eye so that's just a semicircle of the eyes just to put it in place okay so let's put in those little paws so we can see where they are so let's put let's see let's see a bit of red a little bit of blue just darken up the red a bit just so we can get get them started so we can separate those just fill it in there just a little semicircle on those two it's fine and just a little semicircles on those. So, just so we can get something in there to show that there's a little pause there, okay? So, a little pause. So, let's make them almost look like flowers. Just fill that in a little paw, fill that in a little paw, a little flower. One right here, one here. I think there's something down here and then we'll put in a little shadow a little bit of red pinkish color in there just to give us some shadow we'll be going over this with the white too so let's just put in a little bit of pinkish color in here just to separate so you know it's a paw that's all there we go and put a darker color in there if you want if you want a grayish color you know, we can go with the pink or the grayish color. You don't want it too close to uh, the shadow color that's already on there because you want to be able to, to be able to see it. So we'll just put that in just a little bit there. 
That's all. Just a little bit of pink in there. Let's separate that. Just a little bit. Okay, just just something in here to to show it's a pop. Okay, I already said that a thousand times. Let's move on. All right. Now I have my flat chisel edge brush. Let's try this. Get some white paint. I'm gonna go over the paws. A little bit of white paint. All right. So I just put in some paint on my brush. The tip of my brush. So I won't have too much. And I'm gonna chisel, push down on the chisel edge so that it comes together nice and chiseled. And then we're gonna use the chisel edge to pull back from the top of the paw, pull in. Pull in, pull in, watch those little paws. Down here, just pull in. Okay, it's more white. Because you want to let some of the shadow come through. All right, good, you're doing good. You guys are doing good, I know you, I can feel it. Have fun. I'm having fun. Pushing it up into the pink. And I got more paint, so I have to reload every now and then. Make sure it's a chiseled edge. Pull it in like this. We'll be doing more work with this. We'll be doing more highlights and things. So just We just gotta get things in place. So whenever you're doing a painting, Put on your paint, don't expect it to be perfect first, okay, your first layers. They're just your first layers, okay, and they don't have to be perfect colors, they don't have to be perfect anything. Just get that on, get your shapes, get your colors on best way you can, don't have to be perfect right away. And then, when you do your third layer, even your second layer is just gonna get things in place a bit more. And then when you do your third layer, you should be pretty well finished, close to finished, and it should look start looking good. If you still need more work, you just put more layers on top. I'll show you all that now as we go along. But this is our first layers, okay? These are our first, well I put on the shadow, this we can call this our second layer if you want. And and I always talk about three values, okay? So the first value is the darkest value when it comes to acrylics. And the second value is the medium value. And then your highlight, which is the highest value. So if you go with three values, it'll help you. You won't have to think about what's in between the three values. Because you can go with that too. Put more paint. The more you layer your paint, the nicer it comes out. Okay, we're getting there. Just wanted to put a little extra there. We'll probably highlight this again. This is, I'm just getting the paint out right now. I'm not gonna worry about if it looks too, see daisies, drop my glasses. I'm not gonna worry too much about the shapes right now, but that doesn't look too bad. I'm not gonna worry too much. There's the paws. Let's put on some paint here. Chiseled edge, white paint, pull in, pull in from the line, so that way you can cover up the line. We're going to be covering up those lines even better than that soon. Okay, get your paws on there. Leave some of the shadows if you can. If you can't, if you end up losing all your shadows and it looks too chalky, we'll just put some, you can either put a glaze on the top or we can just go back and uh, put some shadows in. So don't worry too much. All we want to do is get something on there right now. Just get something on there. Same when I'm drawing. Sometimes I'm like, uh-oh, where do I start? It's a little complicated. And then I just, just start drawing lines. No matter what it looks like, I just keep, just start something. No matter how bad it looks. And then once I get it started, then I know that I can start picking out the easiest parts. So whenever you're painting or drawing, Pick out the easiest parts first and do those. And, uh, you know, make, make it easy for yourself. 
so you can enjoy it. It's sad when there's people tell me I'm giving up because I can't do it, I don't know how to start, I don't know where to go with it. It's frustrating. I wish, sometimes I wish I lived in uh, your part of the world or I'm in Newfoundland so people come to my art classes, my studio and I can show them all these things but on video I've been putting out videos on how to improve your paintings and easy ways to do things and stuff so if you have any questions or suggestions that you want me to do a video on or anything to help you answer any of your questions just let me know what to do now what I'm going to do is use my other synthetic or nylon brush chiseled edge and I'm going to go back into the black and blue again and we're going to bring out some fur like this right here see I'm going to bring the fur out on the edges like that okay so we get the furry look so we'll go back with the black and blue and we'll take our brush our chisel edge and start pulling out pull out pull out pull out pull out pull out pull out out and up and out the chisel edge will give those nice so reload if you have to maybe the fur is going this way this time pull up and out going there we go and we get some more paint we need it and we'll go down around the back of the head here pull out and now you're getting some nice little fur textures pull out again if they're not you're not getting what you want. Let's pull out more. Good. Pull out, pull out. So you start on the inside where it's already black and then you pull out. See that? Isn't that cool? Let's do the tail in the back. There we go. Get some paint. And we get a little bit of fur sticking out here. Start inside and pull out. Inside and out. You get those lines. That makes it look like fur. There we go. I'm going to do the tail. Tail comes up. Start inside. Pull out. Chiseled edge. There we go. See that? And probably a little bit on here. Give it a fluffy look. There we go. It's okay if your tail fattens up a little bit. And down around the back. Bring it out from here, inside, out. Oops, not too much. Little stray here is going here and there. Come down around the back of the leg. Down around the back of the leg. And out. You can have as fluffy or furry as you want. Nice. And then we can bring some a little bit down here into the paw. And get more paint. You probably need a lot of paint to, to get it to move. Good. Maybe just a little bit out here. 
down around the belly. Alright, and we got some coming around the back of this leg here. We're going to make this kitten really fluffy. Just some more over here. A few little streaks coming out, start inside and pull out. Out and down over the paw. Good. And some around the belly here. Let's see, let's see. Pull down and out. And this here. Maybe it's going up this way. Try to figure out which way you think the kitten kitten's fur might be moving. Here we go. Get more paint. Won't move. So start inside the black that's already there and then start pulling up. And you can pull up towards the white. All right. Pull up towards the white, get some fur in there, get more paint if it starts to fade out on you. All right. And then we'll go. Out. And out. Inside out, okay? Inside the black and out. Good. Finish up this in here. Fill it in a little bit. Just keep that line there for now. All right. Already it looks nice and fluffy. Now with your dirty brush, just add some uh, white, a little tiny bit of white to make a gray color. All right, so I'm just going into my gray color. And I'm gonna go back over that again. This time, a few little strokes. Just a few little strokes, just here and there, just to go with the shape of the head. And you can also put in some, uh, let's see, let's see. Just stroke on some of these gray lines just to bring out fur. When that dries, it'll dry a little dark. Can you pull out into what you already did here? Down over the back, the neck. If you end up making your your uh, too many strokes, go back and get some black. I'll show you that in a second. Okay. So I'm going to get some more of my gray, put on some more fur. Now we don't have our black going out here, so let's put that in first. Get your black, blue and get some fur out here. It has to be black because it won't show up if you do it with the highlight. A little bit of fur here. And under here. And here. Good. Now get your grayish color and start putting on some more little bits of fur, just little, little strokes, little, little strokes all over the place. Go with the shape of the head is coming down this way. All right. And come down in here, just over the eye, under the eye, in between, around the nose. Just put them on here. Little stroke, little stroke here. 
skip over and start again another part. Okay. Getting there, we're getting there. When that, when that dries, it won't be so bright and it'll look more natural. Some more gray paint. Uh, let's start with the tail. I'm going to start at the top and pull in from those ones that are outside. I'll just pull in some of these. I'm going to leave that side there dark. Good. It's too bright. Get some more black and blue and add that to your grey colour that you made. Now nice little strokes. Let's say the back is coming around this way. Just little strokes. So you put a couple strokes up here, you move down, jump over. Good. I'm trying to make mine a little bit brighter for you so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. Good. So all we're doing is put little strokes, just for fur. Little tiny ones, bigger than and some little bigger ones, but mostly small ones. Little small strokes. Little small strokes. And you're leaving your black. See? This is an easy way to make a bit of fur. This is a, there are different ways to make fur and make cats and depending on a fluffy cat or short haired cat or all right, so there we go, little strokes. And down around here will probably be a little darker, so you can keep your paint a little darker. Touch and pull, touch and pull. Touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. Little strokes, just touch and pull. <clears throat> and we'll have some here. So a little bit here. Just lightening up a few spots there so you can see it. Come out with the fur that came out to the side. Leave the black. Let's see? Now let's do the other one chest. Start up here, wherever you're comfortable. Okay. Now let's just say you said, oh no, that's too much. I don't like that. Just go back in with your black and blue and pull in some more strokes in between like you just did. Okay. See? And that will take out a few. And we'll probably be doing with some of these just to make it look more furry. So, we'll get some more gray, and we will go with the shape, oops, gray it up a little bit. Let's gray it up a little bit so you can see it. I'm going into the, the fur that I put out, pulled out on the, there, just a little bit here and there. I'm jumping over in spots, making these little... I'll come down with these, go with the shape I've already got there. Good. <laughs> now, see, that's not too hard, is it? Looks cute. Well, you can take some more paint, lighten it up a small bit, gray. Just lighten up a small bit and Let's go over a little bit of these just to highlight some of the ones we already have done. Not too much. Just in spots. Just because paint dries really, really. Just a little tiny pecks here and there. See? So you just go and put in a few little extras. That's all. Give it a third value. 
So we got our dark and our medium, and now we're just putting a, a third value on, a highlight. If you look at your paintings and you think of three values, dark, medium, or light, whether it's trees, or no matter what it is, you will see your painting come alive because of the three values. Start off with your dark and then start adding your medium and highlight your third. Let's see, that's all I'm just doing is going back over them a little bit more just to bring them out a little bit more, that's all. So, just a couple more. Just a couple more. I'm just trying to think of maybe where the light is shining on the cat. That's a bit of a highlight. Good. Let's see where else. Maybe a little bit here. Top of the head. Just pick a few spots. If, the sun, if there's a light coming in through this way, then it'll probably be on the back and different parts of the fur. Brightening it up a bit. Maybe it's a little bit right here. Who knows? It's your imagination, so you decide. Just think of where the light is. Maybe there is no light, maybe it's just one light all over the place. Good. Maybe a little bit here on the face to bring that out a bit more, make it more round. So, now, that's nice and furry. Now if you say, if you put too much on, go back into your black and blue, alright, with your same brush. And then move in some more black in between what you just did or just go over certain spots tone it down or to make the make the fur a little shorter right look see that see that will take out some of the ones that are too big too long and it'll give it a more even furrier look see So you don't have to worry if you put too much on or not. You can always go back over with some black to shorten up what you did. There we go. Same with the top of the head, some dark color. Put some black in between what you just did or shorten up some of the fur a little bit. That will make the uh, highlight stand out even more. Now, good. Use my liner brush for the eyes. So let's try the eyes. So I got yellow on my palette. You can get green, any color green that you have there, or you can take yellow and blue and make a nice green. Okay, make a nice green. I say a medium. A little bit of white to brighten it up a bit. And, um, hmm. Let's try, let's try that anyway. So the eye is in here where we made that white line. So you can go over that white line now with the green and fill in that spot there, that little half moon. Okay, it's a half moon there and a half moon here. So you go back over that. Good. So you got the eyes. Good. And now take that yellow, that green, clean up the edges if you need to first. Clean up your edge. Make sure it looks right the way you want it. Just a half moon, basically. I'm going to go over that white there, trying to get that white covered up. 
without making it look too odd. Good, and then I'm going to take some more white and I'm going to add that to the green that I just used to brighten it up. And then I'm going to make that, put that on the edge here where that white line was. Right here and right here. Ooh. And now I'm going to take my same brush, my liner brush, I'm going to clean it off and I'm going to put black on there, just black this time. So I filled up my brush with black. Make sure it's not too much on it because you want to, I'm wiping it off and I'm just going to make it so that it's a bit of black paint on it. And then we're going to put in the little black cat eyes. Just a streak, stroke down. Okay. Stroke down towards that white line that you made. Ooh, scary. So cute, isn't it? All right. And now for the little nose. Let's put a bit of red. A little bit of red and let's put a bit of blue. Now you might say, how do you know what colors to use? Well, um, after painting for so long, you get used to the colors that you want to use yourself. Color mixing in theory and, and that you have to learn, that you have to practice and learn all that stuff. But um, I want to darken this nose, so I'm going to use pink, it, it, the pink, it's well, the red, and the blue to darken it. And if it's too dark, I might a tiny bit of white. So it, it's a lot of just figuring it out as you go. So think your three values. So I have a, I have a medium value, so I want to darken that up. I'm going to go with my darker value on top of that just to give it a shadow. Still thinking of values. Still thinking of the values. And then I'm going to go get some white to brighten it up again for my lightest value. Just adding white to my color. And I'm just going to add a little bit down here, whoops, and a little bit over around the edge here, just to give it some shape. So, pull it up into the, the reddish part a little bit, and that part down there I messed up. I'm going to put a little bit of black in there just to cover that up. See, you can fix your mistakes. That's a bit better. So you fix up all your little mistakes and your little whatever way you want it. So if that's still too bright on the edge there, just um, go back with your purplish color and fix it. Good. There's the eyes and the nose. And now the ear. So take your pinkish color for the ear. Make so add some white to it. Let's see how that looks. Just to brighten up the air so we know we're there. So let's just add a little bit on that edge there that we did. And come around and up. Just fill that in with that color. And let's put a little bit of color on this edge here. It's just to give it shape. Make the ears stand out a little bit. If this too bright, just darken it up with your purplish color. Just add a bit of blue to your red and get a purplish color if you rather. And then you can put that here. And a little bit here. Now as you can see, there's a space there. See where I was, didn't want to go into my ear. So we'll put black in there now. So you can use the same brush. Put black on your brush. All right. And then fill in some fur around there. All your little details. All those little details can be fixed up as you go along or at the very end. There we go. You got anything over here to fix? You can probably put some fur on the ear. 
So now we'll add a little more white to the paws here. So let's take the white and pull that out to the side a little bit just to make it fluffy looking. See? Let's pull it out and down around here. And sometimes it's a little hard to get the brush to move. But chiseled edge brushes will work really well for you. Now we're going to be putting some grass and stuff on the feet, so not to worry too much, but just put a little extra white on top of here, we'll do our third value we'll say, and we'll do the other foot, paw, the paw, so we get some fur coming out here, I'm going to add a little more here I think, good, just so I get some fur sticking out, and then I'm going to pull out some fur down here. And then I'm going to come back up. You do whatever way makes you comfortable. And here, and I'm going to pull out some of these lines here. Good. Now, still got some shadows. And then we'll do the other one. Chisel edge, a bit of white. And we got a little, let's put a little furry on this one. Here we go. Just see how I'm pulling it out to the side a little bit. And then I'm going to pull down. I'm going to start at the bottom, pull up, pull down, so I can keep some shadows, I find if I do that it'll help because then in the middle there's some shadows left over. So I come down to meet. And then you can pull out some little furry lines there. Look at that. Alright, so we've got one more over here, we'll just add a little bit of white. A little bit of white on the top. I don't think we need much fur there, but you can go back into that there to make it look more furry. Okay, a little bit of white. Come back into the black a little bit. Come back up here. Just use your chisel edge to get that, and to get that area here. Good, and then up here, and then down into what you already have done. And then down to the fur a little bit to make it furry looking. And just whatever's left over, just pull some of that in there. Good. So I think so far that looks pretty good. And um, so as you can see, there's the one I'm going by. The one I did earlier. Alright. So now we'll put on some grass and a flower. And I can show you then the brush that I use. See, and that's the one we have here, and uh, that's the one we have here. That wasn't so hard. Now here's the brush that I use. I think people buy them too because I signed them with my signature, and um, and you know if you sign something, you're not going to sign something that's not going to work for you. So I'm going to use the one I already used. So after a few uses, you're going to get that. Nice scruffy look. See? Isn't that cool? See how that's... I'm going to show you how to do the grass now. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mix up some green. So if you have green already mixed up, you go ahead and use that. And I'm going to take some yellow. And I'm going to add some blue to make green. Because I want a really dark green. See how beautiful green that comes out? Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm going to use that to make my dark green first, alright? So I'm going to take my scruffy brush, always dampen your brush first, but look at that, see how it all separates for you? And then I'm going to turn it uh, horizontal and I'm going to tap, and I'm going to get more color, so I hope you can see that, okay. So then I'm going to add more yellow. A little bit more yellow just to brighten it up a bit so you can see it. And I'm going to horizontal and I'm going to add, mix my colors so I keep getting the nice dark green. There we go. See? See, look, look at the grass. And this brush will do all the work for you, okay? It just amazes me what I get out of it. it amazes me. And I'm just, I'm just adding my colors. My, get your dark green. 
just by mixing yellow and blue. See how nice and dark that is? I love it. So we're going to tap this on down here. There we go. Look how beautiful. Just look. I can't get over how nice it is. It's beautiful. I really like it. So we'll uh, keep adding the dark green on the bottom first. Like I say, add a bit of yellow if you need to, just if it's too dark. But I'm just trying to get the darks in there first. All right, nice and dark. That's why I love mixing my yellow. All right, so just watch, look, see that? See those little things coming up there? The brush is doing that for me. I don't have to worry about it. And turn your brush different ways to get different effects. Look, just love it. All right, so I'm just tapping down here. And just tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. All right. And so we'll decide how far up we want the grass. Put some on the paws. All right. So we'll add some more. So we'll add some more here for the grass. I'm just turning my brush horizontal and vertical to get some different effects. See, just look. So glad I came across these brushes years and years ago. Just putting a few up here just to get them ready for flowers. Depends on how you know how you want your flowers and stuff. So I'll add some more dark over here. I'll make it nice and darker for our first value. All right. Good. Now for a second value, you can leave your brush dirty if you like, and we're going to add maybe some yellow. Just tap into yellow, and then just tap back into the dark one, just so that it's nice and bright. And see that? And then tap on top of what you just did, without destroying it, of course. Just tap on top, see? Tap, tap, tap. And that will bring the grass out with your second value. Good, and you even get some flowers. Look at the flowers that are coming out. Look at that. You don't even have to think about it. Just tap, tap. Gently, I'm tapping gently. Getting more yellow. Tapping around the bottom just to get the grass to stick out a little bit. Look. Unbelievable how this works. What a nice brush. Look at that. How pretty. Good. Now we'll add um, maybe some red. Let's try red to get some more flowers. So I'm just putting some red on my brush. My brush is dirty. I like having different colors. See? Look at that. See what happens. Because it's all open and the br bristles are individual now, almost individual, now you can get some nice... So go a little higher than what you already did. See? And you have a pretty flower. Look at that. Just by touching. I want you to see that because it's hard to believe it. Look, just made it all by itself. Let's try some more here. Maybe we'll bend it a little bit there. Oh, nice. A couple more here. Here. You don't want to turn your brush to see what other flowers are going to come out. Good. And over here, get some more red if you need it. Nice little red flowers. Just look. You don't even have to take one little individual brush and try to do them separately. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap into a little bit of white with my dirty brush. All right, just white. I'm go over some of those to give me almost a rose look. Just a little bit. I'm going to turn my brush a little bit. Tap over a little bit on top of that. See that? Unbelievable. Look, tapping gently. And you can also have some white flowers, probably a little few here, here. Just tap gently. Look how pretty that is. Gorgeous. I love it. I could do full paintings with just this brush. <laughs> you can also use the two inch too, but uh, um, I use that for bigger bigger canvases and, and they all these bristles when you get to use them for a while they will end up like this and then you'll end up being able to put beautiful flowers and 
whatever you want. So that's that. So I don't know how many more flowers you want. You can always add a few higher ones here. You know, just sort of feel it out and see where you want them. Might want a few falling down into the grass here. A little bit of white or pink. Just touch. 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 Uh, see, I get so excited about this that I end up doing too many. <laughs> so I'm going to stop that. And then I am going to make a little flower that the kitten is playing with. Now, you can have a butterfly, a flower, or maybe a little string with a ball hanging down. Whatever your imagination, wherever your imagination takes you. And I'm just going to do a flower for now. So I'm just going to take a liner brush and I'm going to put whatever color you want. It could be blue, it could be green, it could be whatever you want. So I'm just going to put some yellow on one side of my brush and some blue. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, blue. Okay, let's do that. What? Let's do something different. Grab wherever you want it to come out from. It could be coming out from here, say, wherever, you know, just go up against the paw. All right, hopefully I can do this good for you. All right, let's go up against the paw. There we go. Perfect. Well, sort of. And we'll take our liner brush with more paint on. And we'll probably put a few leaves. So just touch and pull in. shape it up and or you can just touch pull like that we need more yellow all right we need more yellow put yellow on your brush and we'll highlight that there we go usually it happens in one stroke but um, it didn't this time that's okay I don't mind I don't want you to get frustrated, okay? Because you can have some fun. Let's just pull on some little, whatever you want there. Just pull them back, pull back. Pull back, pull out, whatever you want. Like you did with the fur, just pull out some of these little things going on here with the flower. It depends on what you're putting there. You guys decide. I'm gonna go back up here, strengthen that up. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll take my chiseled edge brush and I'm going to put some yellow on it because that didn't come out the way I wanted it. So now because I got those and I'm not happy about it, I'm just taking my chiseled edge brush and putting some yellow over what I just did, okay? So I'm putting yellow over those that I pulled out just to give it some kind of a, you know, flowery look. And that's it for that part. Okay, so take the back of your brush and put some yellow and red on there if you want. And just put a little center in for a flower. There we go. It can be a sunflower, it can be whatever you want it to be. A little bit of red, a bit of yellow on the back of your brush. There we go. Now we have a center. Simple. And now take the liner brush and put some, let's see, let's see, I don't know, maybe some white, a little bit of yellow. And then uh, maybe a bit of red too because we can't see it very well because it's up against white. So just put these little petals on there. One, two, three, whatever you want. Just put a few little petals on there. There we go. That's all. And whatever kind of flower you want there, this is just a sample. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Good. Just this little petal little flower. Did you see it? Little flower. Just putting a few little petals on there to go towards the center. Nice. Anything else you want to do with that? You go right ahead. I'll take my chiseled edge brush and I'm going to add a few more of these cute little leaves right here just to make it look just some just chisel edge brush. I'm just bringing some of these out just to give it some shape. Kind of fool this part up a little bit so I'm gonna have to because I'm videotaping I'm just gonna leave it 
and you guys can fix up whatever kind of a there we go I kind of like that though it's got nice and there we go there we go that looks better so you can fix anything you uh, the ways that I make whiskers on my animals so my first brush out of five my first brush is of course the liner brush now you've probably used those before that's one way to do it and I'm going to show you how to do that when I introduce you to the brushes so it's a liner brush and the next brush I have here for your whiskers is a chiseled edge brush nice and chiseled nice and sharp see and it's flat okay see that Nice and chiseled edge. You've got to have one of those for your paintings. Get a chiseled edge brush. If you can't find one anywhere, contact me, alisonpryoryahoo.com, and I'll send you one. I'll have to charge it for shipping, though. That's the only thing. And I have a small fan brush. For making whiskers, would you believe? And I have a chiseled edge. Yeah, so this one here is a chiseled edge angular brush. See the nice tip on that there? You could probably use that for look how nice and chiseled edge that is. Gotta get those brushes. They're fantastic. Another brush that you can use for Whiskers is this one here. I think it's called a rake brush because you rake on the paint. See all the different uh, separated, all the different bristles. Actually, they're not bristles. These are these are not bristle brushes because the bristle brushes won't work. But these are nice uh, nylon or synthetic brushes or natural here, natural nylon. You know. Uh, as long as, like I say, I always say, as long as your brushes are nice and stiff and they bounce back, see? Bounce back. They go right back into place. All of them. They all do that, see? That one. They're all the same. They all bounce back. That's how I pick out my brushes. See? That's an easy, you might say, what kind of brushes should I buy? I don't know what to buy. Well, if they bounce back like this and they're nice and shiny and and they're stiff and, and chiseled edge, some of them in different shapes and that, and fan brushes, uh, liner brushes, then, then you'll buy those. I didn't know what to buy first either when I started buying brushes. And also the bristle brushes are a must. So bristle brushes and synthetic or nylon uh, brushes that spring back. So that's that. So as you can see this is the kitten that we did earlier in my other lessons. And this is uh, the last lesson now for you to um, do your touch-ups and get your whiskers on there and any extra fur and hair that the kitten has. And I see a little bit of fur in the ears and stuff and I'm going to show you some of the um, whiskers first okay so we'll take this liner brush first let's try this one first okay some of the hairs are sticking out but when you put that in water they'll go back or you just rub rub it together and then it'll go back together and make sure your brush is damp it doesn't have to be totally you know totally uh, soaking wet. I got a bit of paint down there. Now when you do this, the trick is to make sure that you use just the tip of the brush and you don't push too hard because you'll get big thick lines and you won't want that. So let's, oh sorry about that. Good, that's a blooper. Now let's try those whiskers again with this liner brush. So Sometimes you get it on, then you have to wipe it off. You put it on, you wipe it off. So we're just going to try it again. See, you have to keep trying until you get it the way you want it. So now, you just touch the area that you want. We'll put our little dots back in here. 
just to guide us to where we want. And then we'll just take our brush, our liner brush, with nice chisel, well not chisel edge on this one, this is a very pointy one. And we'll touch and pull out. And we can pull out one on this dot. See? And we'll pull out one on this dot. Pull out. Good. So the liner brush is really good for making your whiskers. Look, that nice? That's so cool. Now the next brush I want to show you is the one I showed you before, the chiseled edge nylon or synthetic brush. Now sables, I, I'm not sure if, um, it's, it's all different materials, but make sure they spring back, okay? And make sure if you're going to use a chiseled edge, make sure it's nice and thin. It almost disappears when you turn it sideways. And you're going to pick up some white paint and just put that on the tip of your brush. And if it's too much, just wipe it off a little bit. And then we'll try chisel edge so using the chisel edge the whole chisel edge of the brush you touch and you pull out touch and pull out nice big long one there let's see if I can get longer ones touch and pull out even if you have to extend it good see how nice the chisel edge is and how easy it is very easy look very easy all right, I'm gonna keep making whiskers even if there's too many. I just want to, because I want to show you the brushes, okay? And so just use the chiseled edge of your brush, even if you have to stand it up on the chisel edge, and then pull out. There we go. Takes a little hand coordination. And you can also use just the corner of it. Just try using just the corner. You have to experiment and, and see what works best for you, okay? So I'm just going to use just the corner of my brush, and that gives me nice little tiny ones too. Oops, that's a bit thick. Now remember how I showed you to correct your mistakes when you get acrylic paints? As long as the paint underneath is dry, the wet one on top, you take a tissue, a wet paper towel or a cloth, and just wipe it out, okay? Wipe out what you don't like. Just catch it before it dries. See? Nice little trick, isn't it? All right. We'll get some of these lights. See that? Just like that. Look. How cool is that brush? All right. Keep note of what brushes we're using. And we'll try another brush. Now, this brush, I think, is called a rake brush. Um, you know, this is... Uh, see how all the bristles are separated on top? It's also nylon or, or synthetic. And I'm going to, I always like to wet my brush first. I like to dampen it up with water and then wipe it off. And then I'm going to pick up some white and see what we can do with this one. I like experimenting. So, you know, I want to see what I can do with some of these brushes. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try right here. Just pulling it out. So it's pretty thick. But you can also, if you want to get a bunch together, you can pull out a bunch at a time. See with that brush? See how the bristles are all separated? So you want to get some short, smaller ones, and but you want to get four or five at one time, you just touch and pull. Okay, that's that brush. Isn't that cool? Alright, let's see what else we can do. Fun, isn't it? Now the fan brush is similar to that one, uh, it may give you the same similar strokes, but let's try it anyway because they're not um, quite the same as that other brush I showed you, but let's see what the fan brush does. Now the fan brush is great for fur. We're doing whiskers today. Alright, so let's try that. I just got a little bit on there. 
So I'm going to try the corner of my brush first. All right, I'm going to take the corner of my brush and I'm going to touch and pull out. Try one over here. Well, I'm left-handed, so you'll have to probably do this backwards. I backwards. All right, so if you want um, some, say you wanted some fur up here under the ear, you just pull down some furry lines like that. Same with up here. So I'll do that a little bit. And also if you want some more, just pull out just a chiseled edge and pull. And you get these thicker lines, thicker and thinner. See? It depends on how, how much you want to control it. Want a few little lines up here again. So great for thin lines. You could use it for whiskers if you do a little practice. All right. Okay. I have another brush here you might like. So this is the fifth brush. So uh, this one is a chisel. Now you can get them smaller than this, but this is the um, angular brush. But look, it's chiseled chiseled edge. See how tiny and see it almost disappears when you turn it. So you want those bristles to really be tight together. So let's try those. Let's try that one. So just put a bit of paint on it. Where are you? There you are. And we will bring those bring those bristles together. I shouldn't say bristles because they're not bristles. Bristle brushes are Now you can add a little bit of water to your paint to thin it out a bit, or you can use some floating medium. And floating medium will make it uh, more transparent and make it easier to flow. So try some mediums, try a little bit of water, you know, experiment and see what works best for you. Right now I'm just showing you the brushes that you can use for making nice. So I'm just going to use the tip of the brush. See. Cool is that? This kitty got some nice whiskers. See how pretty that is? So you want a few extra ones up here. Maybe a couple coming out here. So you pick wherever you, you look at your picture. Oops. Oh no, I made a mistake. Let me clean it off quick. I'm going to get my damp tissue now and I'm going to clean it off. Hey, simple. Now I got one more trick for you. There's five brushes and this is a little bonus tip, okay? So my little bonus tip is some paper. Would you believe? Just put a stiff. It's a good stiff paper. Okay, it's like, you know, like a card, say we had a Christmas card or, or some kind of card that you didn't need anymore. Just cut a small square. Now see if I can get this to work. I've used it before, so, you know, doing a video may not, oops, almost lost you that time. So, um, another blooper. I'm going to keep all these bloopers. So, here we go. So, all you have to do, show you my messy palette now. Where are you? Okay, there you are. So I just took my paper and I just bent it a little bit. And I just put the whole bit of cardboard on that edge, on the chiseled edge of the cardboard. There's a chiseled edge too, right? Chiseled. And I'm going to take this. Now if I ruin it, I'll just wipe it off. And if it's too curved, and then just Aha! Uh -huh. I got a little whisker. Little whiskers. A whisker here, a whisker there. Little whiskers. See, you just touch. Nothing fancy. A few little extra whiskers. Alright, so we need to reload. Let's go in and get some more paint. And if you if that's too big, just use you cut it again or just touch. I'm going to use the whole thing just to show you what you can get. 
All right, I just don't have enough paint on it. But look, that works too. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that fantastic? So you gotta try all kinds of things to, to see what you can get to work. There we go. Nice long whiskers. And that's a pretty uh, good way to do it. It's fast, it's easy, and it's fun. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any other ideas, tips, or tricks for me, so I can pass them on for you, that would be wonderful. And you leave some comments, and I will answer anything, any questions you have, if I can. If I can't, I'll certainly be looking up the information for you. And I will see you in the next video. Signing out from Allison Pryor. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.